Hi, I'm Kathleen Harrington, and welcome to Artists at Work. My guest today is Mary Shea. Hi, there. And Mary <laughs> has come here with all of her talents. She's an artist, she's a singer, she's a uh, Ma Mary. <laughs> Mary. <laughs> I do all kinds of stuff, <laughs> Kathleen. Yeah, yeah. So my main um, kind of gig is doing chalk art around yes. town and in the Northeast Ohio area. Um, yeah. So most of that is temporary murals uh, and menu items like that. When I first met Mary, she was actually doing the chalkboard at a local restaurant, Hudson's Restaurant in Hudson. And I was sitting there watching her create this board out of nothing <laughs> with beautiful, but it wasn't chalk you used. You used... Right. I actually use soft pastel for the color yeah. in my chalk paintings, um, well, ch chalk art, I guess. Uh, and then I use just regular white teacher's chalk for the white. For the white. Um, but yeah, that's part of why it's so fun for me, actually, is meeting people, having um, customers at the various places yeah. that I go to yeah. uh, interact with me while I'm doing it. Yeah, interact kind of as in, oh no, don't do that. <laughs> right. Oh no, you could, no, put, put that pumpkin right, over in the corner. Right. Right? <laughs> Sometimes it's You're a little so bit. You're so patient. <laughs> I, try, I try to be. It's kind of fun to like have that feedback in the moment while yeah, you're doing it, especially you're doing if you're it. coming up with it on the fly, like right. I usually am. <laughs> and, your, and your chalkboards are off in the menu that you, you're depicting right. what the food is going to be. Oh, right. you got yeah. little lobsters, <laughs> little pumpkins <laughs> and everything. But yeah. the topography, the letters, the fonts that you right. choose, you <laughs> make are, up? Yeah, so I have kind of several different um, variations on like bold text and you know, loopy cursive and things like mm -hmm. that that I try to mix up to make it dynamic. And it all fits um, in a very, the composition fits, the letters and, most and the Most of the time. Images. <laughs> as, as often as I can get it to go together. <laughs> yes, it, it does um, usually come together as, as one piece, which is really nice. It's beautiful. Now, you do this in more than one restaurant, I take it. You do yes. a lot of different locations. Correct. I have about, about five clients that I see monthly. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, right out there, and usually it's on the fly. I come out and I say, "Hey guys, like, what do you need today?" Yeah. And uh, we come up with it on the spot, kind of consult yeah. right there. You know, you just said something before about you do it every month, monthly, and you do it, and it's transitional. Mm -hmm. Does yes. that like pray? Do you, like most artists think when they're painting, "Oh, a thousand years from now, <laughs> this painting will be archival," and it. Right. But no, you're more like. Of the moment. Yeah, you gotta let it go, babe. <laughs> I love this. I yeah. totally love this. So I kind of think of it as like a mandala, uh, you know, those sand art uh, that mm -hmm. you eventually, once you're done, you wipe it right away. Right. Um, and actually, that's one of my favorite bits about redoing a board is coming in and spraying it all down. Yeah. And watching it all like just drip just, down. It's over and done with. Yeah. And on to the next one. And it kind of teaches you to let go of things. I mean, of course, I'll have a picture of each one. Right. Before I erase it. Absolutely. But, um, it's not something I can keep, and I feel like that's kind of a good life lesson in a way. I, I think it's a fabulous lesson for all artists to learn. Is like yeah. this is this is not you know Michelangelo. This is paint it. It's in the process of doing it right, that yeah. the art lives. Absolutely, right. And that's a lot of why I do it the way that I do it. Mm -hmm. So doing it on the fly, coming into a place and having having them tell me what they need in that moment and mm -hmm. coming up with it mm -hmm. as I'm doing it mm -hmm. is exciting and it's challenging and you know you go in there and have literally no idea what you might be doing that day. No. Um, and then by the end of it you've done a full Christmas scene with Santa Claus and some you know <laughs> some presents and like a little kitty sleeping there. So what if the it's radiator. July? It's still beautiful. <laughs> right, you know? They asked for no. it, right? Yeah, they asked for it. They get it. They yeah. get it. Yeah. Now this this kind of artwork has also got other applications because I know you do wedding signs. I do, yes. Party signs. Absolutely. So it's kind of branched out into a, a signage kind of side business where mm -hmm. I do um, like table charts. I've done um, some nice uh, table charts on like an old window. If you can Ooh, imagine yeah. on each little pane, there's some guest names in each table. Um, I love this. Yeah, yeah, and I also have an A-frame that I usually uh, bring to weddings um, to kind of either announce an unplugged ceremony, which in which everybody turns their phone off, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. or you know, just a general welcome to the wedding of you know. Um, right. And those can be fun because you can right. base it off of their invitation. You can base it off their style. So the bride doesn't necessarily have to buy the sign to keep. Right. She buys your service. Correct. And you bring you bring the signage. Yes. And uh -huh. then you take care of 
removing it, but it's there. Right, yeah, so I've, yeah. I've done it that way many times, and then sometimes the bride would prefer to keep it. So I yeah. either do a, a painted process on like, let's say, um, <coughs> like some stained wood. I'll mm -hmm. actually paint their, their item on there yeah. um, and let them keep that to frame or to hang. Um, but usually with chalkboards, it's a, it's a one-time use kind yeah, of deal. It's yeah, it's one time and then on to the next and erase right. it. It's done, I love it. Now, when we first started talking, you mentioned to me that you're, you come from a pretty artistic family. I do, yes, I've been very blessed that way. Um, my whole family, everybody does something that's creative. Uh, mm -hmm. My father was an art teacher for 40 years in Cuyahoga Falls. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Give a shout out, Mr. Mr. Shea. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he was, he was, uh, he's a legend still. Yeah. Um, and a fantastic father, super supportive of all of our art and super willing to share his talent, his mm -hmm. gifts with us. So he was really instrumental in me getting into this in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, oddly enough, my, my start in the chalk business was based on my brother because he, he and I um, kind of did like a cafe <laughs> in Hudson. He owned it and I helped Which him. Which cafe? It was okay. called the Shea Cafe, oddly enough. Okay, the Shea Cafe, okay. <laughs> we really like the name. Um, but uh, we were there in the Summa Wellness Center for a oh, couple of years. I bet there's a lot of people who recognize I, you from the, from there. Perhaps, yeah, yeah that yeah. would be nice. <laughs> we had a lot of great customers and, and people that come in all the time. Yeah. Um, but he found that he wanted to have like a, a menu of the day, a coffee of the day. So that's right. when I got started with pastel and doing that to promote his okay. business. And from there, it was just word of mouth that got me. I love know, this, I love through. this. Um, I saw a painting that you did for your dad. Oh yes, yeah. Recently, very, it was a Christmas, Christmas present? Uh, it was actually his birthday on July 1st, I think. Oh. Uh, the one with uh, the little, me as a toddler with him. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I, I think that is so cool. What a perfect gift. Oh, well, you know what? It's yeah, my go-to anymore yeah. for my loved ones to, to make them some kind of small piece. I made my sister um, the first of many mini pet portraits that I've been starting to do for clients and for friends as well. I love, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they're they're really small, about two inches by Did you by bring this one? I did, yes. Should I just hold it here? Yeah, just hold it. Steady, there you go. <laughs> so this is a, uh, a small picture of my sister's very fancy, curly, long hair cat named Orange Boy. <laughs> um, but this is kind of a glamour shot of him based on a picture that she took. A glamour shot. Yeah. I love this. <laughs> there are many glamour pet portraits. So I was so intrigued when I saw this because I don't think you, you had realized this size painting, which is two and a half inches by, by three, three and a half mm -hmm. inches, is mm -hmm. an art form in itself. It's called an ACEO. That's what you were yeah. saying. An that is really awesome. artist card. Uh, if you were to say, give it to me, it would be an artist trading card. Oh. But if you were to sell it, it's, it's an ACEO and there are collectors around the world oh who gosh. buy only ACEOs and will collect you. That is so cool. I've heard of such things, but yes. I've not gotten into it as fully as yes. as I would hope to. Well, I think um, this could be a whole new avenue for you. <laughs> <laughs> whole new world. <laughs> Woo, all right. I love this, I love this. Yeah. So um, in, the, in the world of painting now, and now mm -hmm. we've moved from chalkboard to painting on canvas, right. you have done portraits. I have. So recently I've done um, a couple wedding portraits for clients that were um, essentially based on one of their wedding photos. Uh -huh. And the fun part about that one is that uh, typically the most popular, the favorite picture of mm -hmm. a couple is a black and white picture, but then I'm asked to paint it in color. So, so <laughs> having to wrap your head around how to colorize an image when you really have no frame of reference of what it looks like. Yeah, or um, what the colors actually were. <laughs> right, right, so that that's always fun, and it's a challenge, yeah. I think that's the most important and to me. And this is all usually oil or watercolor? Actually, it's acrylic, acrylic. Um, acrylic with, sometimes with the use of either a soft pastel or a watercolor pencil, mm -hmm. oddly enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I kind of worked up a, a, an interesting technique where you can use a watercolor pencil on the canvas itself mm -hmm. in color blocks, and then use a white acrylic to, to move that paint around Got it. and kind of get some really nice expressive strokes there. So. It makes sense because acrylic is really water-based. Right, yeah. So, so it can, blends, you get like a nice pastel yeah. 
gradation that I and really enjoy. And you do enjoy. this on paper, on canvas? Uh, usually on stretch canvas. On stretch canvas, yeah. so you get the texture. Yeah. So this is what I, I, I love about your art. It's very, um, let's see what happens. It's very creative. <laughs> right? Let's just do this and I'm, see what happens. Mm -hmm. And that's the fun part. <laughs> it's very fun. Sometimes I get myself in some trouble, you know, like I think we all do. Um, where yeah. you kind of reach a point in the piece where you're like, uh-oh, how do I <laughs> how do I move forward from this? Maybe you make a choice you're not super pleased with. Um, yeah. uh, but that's really one of the things my father taught me, you know, is that art is about getting past those, at least for me. Yeah. It's about getting past those moments where you don't know where you're going in the piece. You don't quite know how to right. fix right. What, what you see there that you don't like. So getting yeah. over those things is what makes it a victory for me when I finish Absolutely. it. <laughs> Sometimes you just need to turn it against the wall and walk yes. away. Or hold it in a mirror. I hold my work in oh, a mirror yes. a lot to see yes. if it looks the same From to my eyes. angle. Yeah. 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 And then all of a sudden it will click and you'll go, oh, obviously I right. need to do this or that, right? Absolutely. Oh, yes. How the mind works. Yeah. So with painting, I I actually took probably a 12-year hiatus from painting and recently got back into it about six months ago. I'm um, so glad you did. Me too. <laughs> it's really great. I mean, I've done some signage here and there, like we've said, uh, painted signage. But in terms of doing it for pleasure or doing it... Um, as an expression as opposed right. to just something to you know promote an mm -hmm. event um, that's really re-entered my life in a big way and I'm so pleased because I did so a lot pleased. in high school and then I just dropped it for a bit took a break but you did some very interesting things in college that were artsy but not graphic uh, graphic arts right you were a music major yes so for a moment I say for a moment <laughs> I was I was a, an opera major at Akron University of Akron um, and at the time, I was also studying fine art at Akron. Um, but at the time, I was, <laughs> was the first soprano. Uh, but shortly thereafter, decided that it really wasn't something I wanted to pursue as a career. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But still, I mean, we still sing in the family. Every year, my mom gets a, an album made by my brother, my sister, and my dad and myself. I want to come her. to your family's <laughs> like Thanksgiving or something. Oh, we're, we're a lot of fun. I Let me tell you. you. Are. <laughs> yeah. I um I I did a little snooping around. I looked at your Facebook page. Ooh, okay. And What'd I found think? out you sing karaoke sometimes. I do, and I really enjoy it. Um, I I <laughs> sing as much as I really can anymore. Yeah. I used to when I was in theater. I was in musicals, um, and you know. Actually, I think my favorite role was playing. I played Fontaine in Les Mis in my high school. Oh my gosh! And I was gosh. like, "Ooh, I'm so fancy." Um, but uh, yeah, <laughs> it's it's just such a rush. And I think yeah. that's also why I like being performative with my art, like having people watch me do that too. Yeah. Because yeah. you get that lovely performing, performing. feeling. I mean, I'm doing yeah. this right now, and everyone loves it. Right. right. I mean, why wouldn't they love it? <laughs> you kind of have to just assume they love it, even if they don't. You love it. <laughs> <laughs> right. And that's the goal, right? <laughs> Um, but yeah, we, yeah, theater was an awesome experience too. Uh, and you did work at the Weather Vane? I did, yes. Yeah. So my mom and my grandma yeah. and her aunt before her um, yeah. all were seamstresses at Weather Vane Community Playhouse. Um, and so my siblings and I spent a lot of time on that stage. We, we essentially grew up at that, at that theater. So doing musicals, helping with costumes, sometimes helping with sets. Um, it was it was an amazing experience. Honestly, it was yeah. really formative. I think for all of us. Well, sure. You learn how to put on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever you have to, you know. Yep. You just get up and you do. You Absolutely. Do it and then you interpret it and and <laughs> right. you have fun with it. Right. Yeah. That's the most important thing. You're having Absolutely. some fun with it. So, <laughs> but you don't do any acting right now. Or Not right singing. now. I would love to actually do more of such a thing. Um, yeah. I just need to kind of budget my time better. I'm just now finding the time to wedge some like art for myself uh -huh. into my life. Um, so if I could get a couple more hours a week, I think I could pursue that a little better. <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see. Definitely more karaoke in the future. I do that as much as I can. <laughs> you need to tell us where we can see you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I've, I've sung karaoke at the Moon Glow. Mm -hmm. Uh, Which here. is in Macedonia? Yes, yes. Google Lounge. It's, yes. it's really awesome. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, and they, they tolerated it. <laughs> they tolerated my singing. Um, but I've also sung at like Wing Warehouse and those kinds of, yeah, types of things. Right. I did a couple competitions. Right. Didn't come in first, but I, yeah. I was in there. I was in the running. 
<laughs> Did you ever see videos of those artists who perform, like they turn the canvas upside down and they're painting? And, yes. And if they could sing at the same time, Mary, <laughs> you, you could have a whole new avenue here. The oh my singing, gosh, yes. The <laughs> illustrator. Wow. Uh, artist. I never even thought about yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> this is like. <laughs> now the question is whether I could focus on one or the other well enough to do it. I think you could. could. I have faith. Oh, I have total faith. I'll you try can it do just this. You. you can do this. You can feature it. <laughs> Absolutely. Bring bring all your art together. Like. Oh my gosh! Heck yeah! <laughs> Actually, it's funny you mentioned bringing it all. I wanted to, for a long time, own a wedding venue so I could make yeah. signage maybe sing at the wedding. Yes. <laughs> and I also love, you know, like, you know, making things pretty with flowers and that. So like was, flower arrangements? I would like yes, that. I would love to say I was good at it, but I but, enjoy but it. But you enjoy <laughs> it. This is a I think it's eighty percent of it. If you're right. really having a good time, it's gonna sh right. it's gonna come through. I agree. I also saw in your in your portfolio there greeting cards. Yes, yeah. So I actually did some greeting cards um, for the popcorn company that I also did chalkboards for when I worked there ages ago here in Hudson. It was named Crazy But True. Uh, but yeah, they they allowed me to sell some greeting cards there, okay. um, and also design like tin labels. But in essence, I have like a whole bunch of graphically designed things like computer design which is rare for me it's usually pen and paper or this or that right um kind of like in the cutesy almost like a kawaii style mm -hmm. um for there those. was like a little mushroom i'm just greeting yes. as a little mushroom we had a little bunny sleeping on a mushroom yeah. and you know he's just snoozing up there <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, i did a couple that were like uh, dessert dessert items yeah. you know yeah. that were kind of sassy yeah. little faces on there but they're a little more simplistic but i think that sometimes can be more marketable well i i think what i the, the common theme is be with your chalkboards and your greeting cards and your work uh with the signage for weddings, it's all about communicating. Absolutely, yes. You're all about reaching out and connecting with people. Absolutely, yes. And I, I love doing that in a way that allows them to connect with others. You know what I mean? Like if, if I can give them a sign or a, a design or a logo or something like that that helps right. them express who they are as a person or as a company or this or that. Did you do company logos also? I have, yes. I, I designed a logo. Talented. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about that, but uh, I designed a logo for a uh, flat line, uh, concrete and construction, which was, it was kind of more of like a, a manly thing, you know, yeah. usually I do kind of themmy no girl flowers. things. No flowers. No flowers on, on this one. No. It was all <laughs> lines and like granite kind of look, feel to it. <laughs> but yeah, the uh, client liked it, so. <laughs> I love this. Another avenue for you to, to pursue that. Yeah. And that one that one's a kind of a new a new avenue uh, to the whole uh -huh. logo design thing. My dad is really awesome at that. But I bet. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure he'll give me pointers if I ask. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you have another partnership going there. Right? Maybe, yeah. Yes. Yeah, logos and <laughs> designs. Mm -hmm. I've also seen caricatures. Oh, oh. yes. Ah. So I I like to do they're not classical, like classic caricatures. I right. haven't yet mastered that art of like, you know, um, exaggerating certain mm -hmm. features here and there. Mm -hmm. But um, I recently did um, a series that included uh, kind of a mixture of my partner, uh, Buzz, Buzz. <laughs> with, with that um, kind of iconic coop devil, if you're familiar. It's a really stylized, yeah. kind of mischievous looking devil yeah. um, designed by artist Coop. Uh, but in any case, I mixed those two together. And he was the perfect model for he that, wasn't really he? Was. He really was. He looked so mischievous. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I gifted that to him. Uh, and and I love that kind of thing, mixing together yeah. two different um, you know, ideas of someone. This right. very cute right. little picture of him smiling and this kind of mischievous devil. And you've, you've combined <laughs> them into the perfect little icon for right. Buzz. Right, yeah. <laughs> I need to meet, but I need to meet all these wonderful people in your life. Oh, they're awesome. Yeah. I'm really surrounded by some great people, yeah. very creative, supportive people who've always yeah. been. Even like you said, your mom and your grandma are, were seamstress. Yes. Mm -hmm. Costume designer. Yes, yeah. So they've influenced us a lot just with having that open mind to creativity, kind of seeing, mm -hmm. like we'd be watching a movie as kids and my mom right. would be like, oh, that costume, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like totally out of the blue, just yeah. inspired out of that. And she would make a whole, like let's say Joseph in the Amazing Technical Dream Coat. She mm -hmm. like based that off of one costume that she saw, yeah. like watching some random movie. Um, yeah. So kind of finding that inspiration where you, where you go. 
um, was something I got from from my family so and my so. sister too. I mean, she she's also an artist as well. She mm -hmm. does a lot of really awesome stylized cartoon work and um, collage work, mm -hmm. and it's it's awesome because our styles are so different. We can influence each other. So. I, I think it's amazing because every guest I've had here, we always talk about not just their medium, but the creative process. Yes. And what it is, it is that inspires you to either, you know, take a table and repaint it and make it better, or to go sit in a field and paint, a, a, you know, a painting of the landscape. What right. is it that drives you to go out and do what you do? Oh. And, and it isn't hardly, it's hardly ever about the end result. It's always about the process of Absolutely. doing it. Absolutely, yes, yes. And right. that's what drives me, I think, is the experience, the, the self-challenge. Right. Like, all right, can I do this? Can I do can it? Can I pull this off? Yeah, right. Because uh, everything's new. Um, everything's new. It, it, right. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. And, Absolutely. You know, Got to be the man in the arena. Too many people get, <laughs> to, as an artist, too many people just get stuck at, oh, I can't do that. Right. And I've done that myself. I mean, I think we're all guilty of that yeah. here or there. But um, anymore, if yeah. I find myself saying I can't do this right. when it comes to an art project, I'm yeah. like, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> You're gonna try. It doesn't right. matter. Yeah, right. you don't have to show it to anybody. <laughs> right. right. But you have to. You have to try it to see what happens. Absolutely. Yes. Right. Yep. And sometimes right. you can find a really awesome piece. Uh, that is completely differs from what you set out to do. Exactly. Just by trying to get there, you right. find something else. You know. The, remember Bob Ross, and yes. he make his happy little clouds yes. and the happy little mistakes. <laughs> yes, and absolutely. I think so much of of art is it's the mistake that happened, but you turned it into something. Right. Right. Yeah. Or you made use of it. Like For I'm not. Sure. That's not going to defeat me. I'm going to make that something better it teaches you resilience you know even yeah. with like the little things in your day-to-day -day life yeah. you know if you can come upon an issue in your in your piece that's really really challenging and somehow find the patience and and the boldness to right. get past it right you can do that in your normal life like just go into the grocery store you know yeah right. just, <laughs> just get up and do it yes just get up show up mm, showing I think you up. said it earlier in, in the show you said something about just get up and show up yeah show if you up show and, up that's 85 right. percent of the success right there <laughs> and here we are <laughs> we showed up today. We're here. We're having a wonderful time. Right? Yeah, absolutely. This is so fun. I mm. know that you're also going to bring along, uh, we're going to be showing a video of you in progress. Yes, right? yes. So as you do your chalkboard. So like for a, sure. Stop motion, slow motion or? Um, uh, time lapse, I time think lapse. is what they call it. Yeah, yeah but uh, some clients at, at Hudson's actually, yeah. they they set it out, um, set out a little camera on the table to record oh. me doing a full piece and that's always nice to see you know uh, how right. how my process kind of moves through the, the chalkboard because sometimes I'm not even fully aware of it right. while it's going on right um, and you can also see how often I'll erase and redo uh, that's so important you're not you're not totally committed to like it has to stay there get rid of it and right. start over and sometimes you just have to like let it go like if you draw a cute little ribbon yeah. And you absolutely love that little baby ribbon and it doesn't fit <laughs> into your design. You got to kill your darlings. Just you, get rid of that. You got to get rid of it. Even yeah. if it's the most, per you're painting, it's the most perfect tree in the world, but it's in the wrong place. Oh, yes. I've done that. I've painted the wrong tree in the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> and I put that baby ribbon in the wrong place on well, the board. At least on canvas, the cheat is you could get out your scissors and crop and just have a small painting of a oh, tree. Because <laughs> you're right. I don't know if I've just, ever taken a scissor. Have you ever cut your painting? Oh, yeah. Oh, Seriously? Oh sure. Do you peel them off the? Well, thing? you crop them down. Yeah, you oh can. My it gosh. If, if it's on board or paper, you just cut it. Wow, see that's bold. I envy that boldness. Well, <laughs> sometimes <laughs> in a composition, there's a little gem here. The right. rest of it is pff, awful, but cut the rest away and keep the good part. I've considered doing that, yeah. but I've, I just haven't had. I haven't had the. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to get you some scissors. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> You're just going to have a bunch of ruined paint. I'll, like, cut it in You'll the wrong have place. Of, sometimes you wind up with some tiny, tiny little paintings. <laughs> that boat was really good. <laughs> the rest of it, not so oh. much. Not so much at all. Oh, my so, goodness. So um, I think we've covered so much here. I know there was so much we wanted to talk about. You do Absolutely. pet portraits. I do, yes. And that's something and that I'm trying to do more do, of. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you have a website? 
I don't presently, but I am on Facebook and on Instagram. Okay. So you can find me with Mary Shea All Day Designs. Okay. Um, Mary Shea All Day is all one word. All uh, on Facebook. On Facebook, okay. yeah. Okay. We'll um, put it up on the screen, yeah. too. So, you okay, know, great. Thanks. Writing. Or, and how to contact you is the best way then is through Facebook? Yeah, Facebook or Instagram. And really, I love it when people reach out to me via social yeah. media because then I can kind of consult with them on how to how to handle what they want to do. Right. Because right. everyone comes to me with something different. So right. let's say you want a massive painting of your St. Bernard, or if you want a <laughs> tiny little painting of your grandpa's boat, or if you want like... <laughs> I a, do the tiny ones. Right. <laughs> I'll do the tiny, <laughs> tiny ones. Like we can, we can always talk it out. I can always try to figure out a way to, to get you what you need. Like I said, that chase, chasing that <laughs> finished pa piece is why I do it. You, you, yeah, you're going to get results. You will get results. <laughs> I, I love so. this so much. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. This is so nice. Well, thank you. I'm so glad you came today. And yes. I know everyone's going to be so excited to see your work either in person at any of the local <laughs> establishments. Absolutely. See yeah. it here on, on this show, on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come and find me. I'll be there. <laughs> You'll be there. Okay. Well, thank you, Mary. I thank sure you. appreciate your coming oh, out today. Oh, I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you so much. Thanks. <laughs> Yo, what up, dogs? Paul Rudd here, actor and certified young person. A few days ago, I was talking on the iPhone with my homie, Governor Cuomo, and he's just going off about how us millennials need to wear masks because, get this, apparently a lot of COVID is transmitted by us millennials. No cap. So Qualms asked me, he's like, Paul, you gotta help. What are you, like 26? And I didn't correct him. So fam, let's real talk. Masks, they're totally beast. So slide that into your DMs and twitch it. Vibe check. Yes, queens like ourselves. We wanna go to bars, we wanna drink, hook up, do our TikToks. I get it. I'm not gonna preach at you like some celebrity. Ugh. This is a combo where I talk and you shut up and wear your mask. Hello? Oh, hi, Billie Eilish. What's that? You're wearing your mask? Man, I wanna stand you. You're so my bae. Yo, listen, hype beasts. Masks protect you and your dank squad because caring about other people is the new not caring about other people. La, 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 la. Rock and roll. Now that's thick. You want a challenge? How about a stop the pandemic challenge? What about that? What about a save grandma challenge? That fun enough for you? <laughs> my name is Paul and I'm six feet tall almost. And <laughs> I wear my mask and it's all I ask <laughs> that you wear your mask. Please wear your mask. Just wear a mask. Just wear a mask. It's easy. It's simple. Please. It's not hard. People are dying. Hundreds of thousands of people are dying and it's preventable. It's preventable. Just wear a mask. I shouldn't have to make it fun. It's science. It's, it's science. No. Look at us. Hey, hey, look at us. Look at us. Who would have thought wearing masks would be a problem? <laughs> Not me. We gotta yeet this virus. Oi. <laughs> <laughs>